Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Stephen County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers, viewers, and listeners advisory video cast. Enjoy. Library Connections number 64. This is the Friday, August 6th, 2021 edition of Library Connections. And just a quick beginning note, Library Connections videos premiere on Facebook weekly, Fridays at 1 p.m. The videos may also be found on the Southeast Stephen County Library's YouTube page. Kicking things off with the top five fiction bestsellers of the week from the New York Times. At number one, The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave. Hannah Hall discovers truths about her missing husband and bonds with his daughter from a previous relationship. At number two, People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. Opposites Poppy and Alex meet to vacation together one more time in hopes of saving their relationship. At number three, The Paper Palace by Miranda Cowley Heller. After an extramarital dalliance, Ellie must choose between her husband and her childhood love. At number four, The Cellist by Daniel Silva, the 21st book in the Gabriel Alon series. A private intelligence service plans an act of violence that will aid Russia and divide America. And at number five, It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. A battered wife raised in a violent home attempts to halt the cycle of abuse. Moving on to the top five nonfiction bestsellers of the week. At number one, American Marxism by Mark R. Levin. The Fox News host gives his take on the Green New Deal, critical race theory, and social activism. At number two, I Alone Can Fix It by Carol Lennig and Philip Rucker. The Pulitzer Prize winning reporters examined Trump's final year in office with a focus on the key players around him. And number three, The Authoritarian Moment by Ben Shapiro. The conservative commentator describes what he perceives as threats to American business, education, and politics. At number four, How I Saved the World by Jesse Waters. The Fox News host recounts his career and prescribes ways to defend against what he considers left-wing radicalism. And at number five, and the only non-political book in the top five, The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. How Trauma Affects the Body and Mind and Innovative Treatments for Recovery. Our first recommended read of the week is the new novel, Half Sick of Shadows by Laura Sebastian. The story of King Arthur is well known but now a character approaches with a new point of view, the Lady of Shalott. Elaine of Shalott is cursed to see the future, like the women in her family before her. She escapes the tower where she had been imprisoned, and she grows up in Avalon, along with her friends Arthur, Guinevere, Morgana, and Lancelot. Each has their own destiny, which Elaine has divined from her dreams and her weaving loom. When Arthur is called back to Camelot, Elaine and the others go with him for support. 
For Elaine, it's also an attempt to subvert some of her own visions. Yet, as fate pulls them ever closer to tragedy, Elaine knows that she might have no choice but to follow the path laid out for them, or she can sacrifice to change things for the greater good. Arthur and Lancelot are prominent here, but it is the powerful women, Elaine, Guinevere, and Morgana, who are central to this timeline skipping story. Verdict. Sebastian's adult debut is filled with historical leanings with a feminist twist. Themes of friendship, fate, and morally gray decisions made for the greater good are at the forefront of this Arthurian retelling, and that is the Starred Library Journal Review. Our second recommended read for this week is the new novel The Reading List by Sarah Adams. A recommendation list of eight novels is making its way around the small town of Wembley in the UK, impacting the lives of Mukesh, a widower who never quite understood his wife's love of books, and Alicia, a young library worker who feels trapped by both her job and family responsibilities. It also touches others in the community who weave in and out of the story, but nobody seems to know who the mysterious list writer is. This moving debut demonstrates the power of novels to provide comfort in the face of devastating loss and loneliness. After a rocky first encounter, Mukesh and Alicia soon bond over the reading list. And between the messages each book has for them, and despite their differences, they find the strength to meet their challenges head on. The story shifts between the list first appearance in 2017 and Alicia and Mukesh's meeting in 2019 with relatable characters and a heartwarming tone throughout. Readers who enjoyed Gabriel Zevin's The Storied Life of A.J. Fricky and Nina George's The Little Paris Bookshop will find themselves drawn in by this book. And that is the book list review. Our first audiobook recommendation for this week is the classic title The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien. And I selected this title because I noticed that in the digital catalog and also its companion apps Living in Overdrive, this audiobook has a holds list. If you have a Corning card, you can check this out instantly from the Hoopla catalog, just FYI. So that's why I selected the title. Also, it's a really great audiobook and book. So having said that, let me jump into a little bit about the book and the audio presentation. This audio is narrated by Rob Inglis. What could possibly sound more English, more epic, and more mythological than the Lord of the Rings in the hands of BBC Radio? In this 1981 full cast dramatization, the grand language, leisurely pace, and absorbing detail of J.R.R. Tolkien are all evident as are the high production standards of the BBC. I can't stress enough the Britishness of this production, from the voice of Ian Holm as Frodo Baggins, to the courtly musical score, to the urgent, gray, misty, Celtic quality of the last words of this first book. Quote, it was beyond all hoping that such a road would prove safe. Though just how dangerous it would turn out to be, we could never have imagined in our most terrifying nightmares. And of course, the narrator in the dramatization will do that much better than I have. 
And I'm digressing. When you hear that quote, you feel those words. Tolkien wrote serious fantasy, and these tapes capture his story's timelessness and wise undertones. That's the audio file review, and you can, of course, tell that it's the original review from 1981, since most people don't listen to audios on tapes anymore. Now, I imagine most people know about The Lord of the Rings and The Fellowship of the Ring, but just in case there's anyone out there who's not familiar with the story, here's an overview of the story. One ring to rule them all. One ring to find them. One ring to bring them all, and in the darkness bind them. In ancient times, the rings of power were crafted by the elven smiths, and Sauron, the Dark Lord, who forged the One Ring, filling it with his own power so that he could rule all others. But the One Ring was taken from him, and though he sought it throughout Middle-earth, it remained lost to him. After many ages, it fell, by chance, into the hands of the hobbit Bilbo Baggins. From his fastness in the dark tower of Mordor, Sauron's power spread far and wide. He gathered all the great rings to him, but ever he searched far and wide for the one ring that would complete his domination. On his 111st birthday, Bilbo disappeared, bequeathing to his young cousin Frodo the ruling ring, also known as the One Ring, and a perilous quest to journey across Middle-earth deep into the shadow of the Dark Lord and destroy the ring by casting it into the cracks of doom. The Lord of the Rings tells of the great quest undertaken by Frodo and the Fellowship of the Ring. Gandalf the Wizard, Frodo's friends and hobbits Merry, Pippin, and Sam, Gimli the Dwarf, Legolas the Elf, Boromir of Gondor, and a tall, mysterious stranger called Strider. Strider does have another name, and that's a little bit of a mystery. Those who have read the books, watched the movies, or listened to the audios know who Strider is, but I won't spoil the surprise here. Suffice it to say, Strider is uh, very important to the plot of the trilogy, and I'll leave it at that. If you like fantasy, this is a fun adaptation, and I recommend it. So our second audiobook recommendation for this week is much lighter. It's a cozy. It's called Plymouth Undercover by Pamela Kelly. The audio is narrated by Leslie Howard, and of course I want that to be the actor Leslie Howard from the Golden Age of Hollywood, but it's not. This Leslie Howard is female, and I'm digressing. Let me tell you a little bit about the plot for Plymouth Undercover. Meet Emma McCarthy, a 30-year-old failed actress who just moved home to Plymouth, Massachusetts, and her mother, Cindy, a yoga instructor in the Pine Hills, an exclusive golf community in town. The duo have just inherited Court Street Investigations, a private detective agency, and its one part-time employee, 80-year-old Mickey, a retired police detective. They expect typical cases, like cheating spouses or workman's comp. But when they are hired to find a local missing woman, they quickly learn that the agency also has a reputation for solving murders. And on a reader's note, this is the first book in the Court Street Investigation series. And usually I just recommend two audiobooks per week, but since the overview of that last audio was so short, I thought I'd add a third. So I'm going to recommend The Crooked Branch by Janine Cummins. And this audio is narrated by Aoife McMahon. From the national best-selling author of American Dirt and A Rip in Heaven comes the deeply moving story of two mothers 
from two very different times. After the birth of her daughter Emma, the usually resilient Magella finds herself feeling isolated and exhausted. Then at her childhood home in Queens, Magella discovers the diary of her maternal ancestor Ginny and is shocked to read a story of murder in her family history. With the famine upon her, Ginny Doyle fled from Ireland to America, but not all of her family made it. What happened during those harrowing years, and why does Ginny call herself a killer? Is Magella genetically fated to be a bad mother, despite the fierce tenderness she feels for her baby? Determined to uncover the truth of her heritage and her own identity, Magella sets out to explore Ginny's past and discovers surprising truths about her family and ultimately herself. And that's the third audiobook recommendation for this week. Our first streaming recommendation for the week is the 2003 film The Big Fish, starring Ewan McGregor, Albert Finney, and Billy Crudup, and of course directed by the great Tim Burton. You can stream The Big Fish from Amazon Video and Google Play, and you can also request it on DVD through StarCat or by calling the library. There are very few American directors with a style as instantly recognizable as Tim Burton, whose zany gothic fantasies include Beetlejuice, Edward Scissorhands, and Alice in Wonderland. At home within this lineup is the fantastical Big Fish, which follows Will Bloom and his dying father as the former tries to untangle fact from fiction in the latter's life story. The past is created through a series of colorful vignettes as witches, giants, and werewolves wander through the old man's tales. A raucous cast including Helena Bonham Carter, Danny DeVito, and Steve Buscemi bring the story to life and the ending is magical. And that's the overview from the publisher, but it is a really terrific movie. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Our second streaming recommendation for this week is the TV series Farscape, which was originally on TV from 1999 to 2003. It starred Ben Browder and Claudia Black. You could stream it from Amazon Prime and Apple TV. If you're a sci-fi fan that loves to dip into a good classic on a weekend, this series is a good contender. Farscape is an Australian-American science fiction series about an astronaut on an experimental space mission who gets lost after traveling through a wormhole and landing right in the middle of an intergalactic conflict. With no time to figure out how to get back to Earth, he quickly has to figure out how to survive uncharted territories and navigating new allies and new enemies. The series ran in the late 90s and early aughts, so it's filled with deliciously corny effects you simply love to see. And I have to interject here that maybe you just have to suspend disbelief. I'm not one who's a fan of deliciously corny effects. If you like deliciously corny effects, by all means enjoy. Those of us that are more of a serious cerebral sci-fi bent will just suspend disbelief because we know the series was done in the late 90s and the early aughts. And after digressing a little bit, let's get back to Farscape. The series was canceled after its fourth season and fans rioted, leaving the sci-fi channel with no choice but to offer a bit of fan service and create the miniseries Farscape, The Peacekeeper Wars, which does indeed tie up a bunch of loose ends. If you're a fan of the sci-fi fantasy genre and you haven't seen this series, you're in for a special treat.
and that's the BuzzFeed review. And our Hoopla recommendation for this week is the 2017 film 20th Century Women. The cast features Annette Bening, Ellie Fanning, Greta Gerwig, Billy Crudup, and Lucas Jade Zuman. The film is directed by Mike Mills. And a little about the plot. A strong-willed single mother raises her teenage son with the help of two unconventional younger women in this funny, heartwarming look at a makeshift family's comic adventures in Santa Barbara during the summer of 1979. In the film is what I would call a dramedy. So check it out. If you have questions about this weekly video cast, send me an email. My email address is rhymerl at stls.org and I'll get back to you. That's R E I M as in Mary, E R L at stls.org. And a note about library hours currently, we're open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., on Saturday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., and we're closed on Sundays. The library's website, which offers a whole host of information about the library, upcoming programs, and services, can be found at ssclibrary.org. StarCat and its companion app, BookMine. StarCat is the catalog of physical library materials available to all card holders of the public libraries in the Southern Tier Library System, better known as STLS, the system encompasses all the public libraries in Steuben, Chemung, Yates, Schuyler, and Allegheny counties. You can find StarCat online at starcat.stls.org, or you can download the BookMine app from your app store. And BookMine is spelled B-O-O-K-M-Y, like my, and E. The digital catalog and its companion apps, Libyan Overdrive, offer cardholders access to ebooks, downloadable audiobooks, and a handful of streaming videos. The digital catalog is found online at stls.overdrive.com. You can download the Libby or Overdrive app to your mobile device to access content. The difference is that Libby is the app for newer devices, so if you have a newer phone or tablet, use Libby. If you have an older device, or a Kindle tablet that takes apps, you want the OverDrive app. And like StarCat, the digital catalog offers content to all card holders within the Southern Tier Library system. Hoopla. The Hoopla catalog features eBooks, comic books, full length albums, downloadable audiobooks, and streaming videos, including both TV shows and movies. All Hoopla items are available for instant checkout for Southeast Stemen County Library cardholders with a maximum of six checkouts per month. You can find the Hoopla catalog online at hooplaDigital.com or download the Hoopla app to your mobile device or smart TV. Communicating with the library. If you have questions about library materials or services or anything else library-wise, you are welcome to go the traditional route and simply give us a call. The library's phone number is area code 607-936-3713. Again, that's area code 607-936-3713. You can also connect with the library via social media. The library has pages on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Library blogs, we have five of them. We have the Book Club for Adults blog, which is found at ssclbook.club and offers information on, you guessed it, the monthly book club for adults. We have the Corning NY History blog, which offers weekly postings showing photos of our area way back in the day. We have the Creation Stationery blog, which is the companion blog to the library's makerspace. So there's creative postings there. We have Story Musings, a blog hosted by the library's resident author and head of adult services, Michelle Wells, 
That one's found at storymusing.blogspot.com. And then Tech and Book Talk, a readers, viewers, and listeners advisory blog with occasionally helpful how-to tech tips thrown in. That's found at ssctech.com. And briefly, here are our references of the week. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new edition of Library Connections. Have a great week.